Good morning, welcome to St. Charles. Let us offer together our prayer for a better understanding of true stewardship in our lives and here in our parish. Lord God, you alone are the source of every good gift, of the vast array of our universe, and the mystery of each human life. We praise you and we thank you for your great power and your tender, faithful love. Everything we are and everything we have is your gift. And after having created us, you have given us into the keeping of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the name and spirit of Jesus, we commit ourselves to be good stewards of the gifts entrusted to us, to share our time, our talent, our material gifts as an outward sign of the treasure we hold in Jesus. Amen. Our presider for this Mass will be Father Rogers. Please stand.
receive adoption, look upon your sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and what other commandments there may be are summed up in saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give the glory and the honor to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give the glory and the honor to the Lord. Speak, O oh Lord, your servant is listening. You who have the words of everlasting life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give the glory and the honor to the Lord. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew glory to you o lord jesus said to his disciples if your brother sins against you go and tell him his fault between you and him alone if he listens to you you have won your brother over if he does not listen take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses if he refuses to listen to them tell the church if he refuses to listen even to the church then treat him as you would a gentile or a tax collector amen i say to you whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven again i say to you if two you two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray it shall be granted to them by my heavenly father for where two or three are gathered together in my name there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last Sunday, after 9 o'clock Mass, I was walking through the social hall on my way up to the office when I saw on the social hall eastern wall a blazing cross with a very ornate design inside of it. Out of nowhere, there it was, shining on the wall in the social hall where there weren't any lights turned on. Okay, Rogers, I thought, this is it. God is really trying to get your attention big time, flashing across a cross against the wall in order to wake you up. I'm going to be the next bishop, maybe the next pope. After a few moments of examination, I came to realize that it was not unfortunately God who was sending me a sign. It was just a curious alignment of a number of factors. With the sun rising in the east, there was a car parked in the lot near the school and it was facing east. It remained there a long time after mass and the sun 
was being reflected off the windshield of the car. That reflected sunlight came through the front doors of the church where there are etchings of the cross with designs in them, then clear through the closed door of the social hall and on on to the back wall where I spotted it. A lot of different factors had to come together in order for me to notice this not from God sign on the wall. As disappointed as I was, it was curious that everything had lined up just so, and thus this highly unlikely non-message came about. In the gospel this day, Jesus gives us quite a detailed rundown of attempting to achieve reconciliation with someone, moving them away from error and back into a proper relationship. First this, then this, then that, Jesus goes on in the gospel today. It is a rather specific listing of things to do. What Jesus fails to mention is that like the fancy cross projected on the outer wall of the social hall last Sunday, in order for this reconciliation plan to work, everything has to line up just right, something that does not often happen. In other words, while the directions that Jesus gives are good and true, the chance of a, a, accomplishing their objective are not real high. The stars have to be aligned just so, as the old saying goes, for the reconciliation sought, sought to come about. But that does not mean, in any way, that does not mean that we should not attempt to do just as Jesus has asked of us. We really should commit ourselves to being reconciled one with another. But as we go into it, we should have our eyes open to the probability of accomplishing that lofty goal. What happens, very often, what happens is that we try to be reconciled to someone who has hurt us. We really try, and it doesn't work. They don't respond as they should. They don't respond as we believe they should. They continue to engage in the same behavior, and we get frustrated and then we give up even trying, not only with them, but with everyone else as well. If, however, we go into this reconciliation venture knowing that it may well not work, we have reduced our chances of frustration and increased our willingness to at least try again, perhaps at another time, but to give that much sought after reconciliation another go. Jesus never said, this is easy, guaranteed to work each and every time. Rather, it is hard, nearly impossible, but that does not mean that we must abandon the goal of being reconciled one to another. Every once in a while, Every once in a while, everything will align and we will enjoy that moment of true reconciliation and know that they were all well worth it, those many attempts, those many failed attempts that we have previously made. We will know that moment of reconciliation and we will have made all of our attempts well worthwhile. Let us now stand and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made,
consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Called to be people of faith, we come to God with our prayers. For Pope Francis, may the Holy Spirit continue to help him. Perseverance in faith, we pray. For public authorities, may God grant them strength to stand for goodness and justice, we pray. For doctors, nurses, and all who look after those who are sick, may they come to see that in caring for others, they are caring for Christ himself, we pray. For this community of faith, may God increase in us the values of faith, hope, and charity, we pray. For Florence and Pete Zerbonia, whom we remember in this Mass, and for Bernard Conway and John Farina, who were buried this week. May all the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs contained in our hearts, we pray. And for John and Albina Donatio, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all knowledge and wisdom, we offer our prayers to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that these are gifts of bread and wine may be acceptable to God, our good and loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O oh God, who gives us the gift of prayer and of peace, grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your majesty, and by partaking of this sacred mystery, may we be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that you gave us your Son as our Redeemer, 
You sent him as one like ourselves, though free from sin, that you might see and love in us what you see and love in Christ. Your gifts of grace, lost by disobedience, are now restored by the obedience of your Son. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As in exaltation, we acclaim. these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and each of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the cup and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all of your faithful people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles, St. Charles Borromeo, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the 
Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await our blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to thank all of you for coming to celebrate with us this morning, especially those who ministered for us at our Mass today. Hope everyone enjoys the rest of their Labor Day weekend. Have a good week, everyone. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.